Hey, hello everybody. Chris Cotton, AutoFix Auto Shop Coaching here. Today I wanted to talk about doing a repair order audit. What are what are some of the steps? What should we do? What should we look for? I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. If you want more information on it, feel free to contact me. Uh, probably the most important thing that I'm not even listing as a step here is you have to set time aside to do repair order audits, right? So before we even get into these seven steps, I want you to go to your calendar, just an hour, spend an hour a week, maybe even 30 minutes a week to get started if you're not used to it, and set that time aside, make an appointment with yourself to do repair order audits, okay? So here we go. Number one, I want you to randomly pick repair orders. You can do them, if you have an older system, you can print them out and do them visually and by touch with your with the paper. Or if you have a, a newer system like Shopware, Techmetric, things like that, you can actually go in and look at the whole process without printing anything out. First of all, just make sure you pick random ROs. Don't get anything that's in sequential order or anything like that, okay? Number two, I want you to look for customer information. Did we get the customer's name? Did we get their email address? Is their address correct? Do we have the VIN number on the vehicle? Do we have the tag number? Also, is the in and out mileage listed on the ticket? Do you force that in or is there a way to fudge it, right? And also, if your point of sale system can track it, let's make sure that we know how the customer likes to be contacted. If they prefer phone calls, prefer emails, or prefer texting. Phone calls and texting, is, is way big, texting more than anything else. Emails anymore, people don't even look at their emails, they just delete them all, everybody's done with email, okay? Number three, what was the original complaint or what was the pebble in the shoe? Why did the customer bring it in, right? Uh, when I say pebble in the shoe, I mean, what was causing this customer concern, things like that to make them bring the vehicle to you. If it's just for an oil service or things like that, then that's great. That's their pebble is they want to make sure that that gets done and gets corrected and moves on. So we want to identify the original complaint. Next, what did the inspection reveal? How good of a job did the technician do at doing the digital vehicle inspection? Did they meet the requirements that the shop has set for the number of pictures that we're supposed to have? How many, um, pictures as a shop do you do you have do you have eight to ten do you have three do you have 20 i don't know that's your standard you enforce it right so what did the inspection reveal next we take it to the next step did the estimate get written and mileage based services get added this goes into the service advisor side of it okay so did we pull that estimate over from the technician is all the information on there correct and then did we add any mileage based services that need to be added outside of what the technician saw or might have recommended. Okay. Next, what was the total estimate versus the amount sold? What is the closing ratio? You know, did we write the estimate for $1,000 and we sold 500? That gives us a 50% closing ratio. Okay, how does that get tracked and measured and what do we do? I would say 50% closing ratio is not too bad, but it's not great either. You know, let's shoot for 65. If you're down in the 35% range, then, you know, we have to have some sort of follow-up or, or some other thing going on um, to fix that. What's the issues there? Okay, so what was the total estimate versus the amount sold? Where are we at with our closing ratio? And then seven is what is the follow-up? So who do you go to in the process to talk about, you know, not getting things done right, right? So customer information, whose job is that? The service advisors to get the customer information. Who's supposed to get in your process the tag number and the VIN number and make sure that's correct. What about the in and out mileage? Is the service advisor responsible for getting the in mileage? Is the technician um, responsible for getting the out mileage. So we're going to look at those tickets and look at each step and say, hey, this broke down here, this broke down there. Also in the follow-up, we have to show the people that are involved in the process that we care and this is important. It's one thing to say this whole process is important to us, but if we don't back it up by anything, then the people don't believe us, right? So what you allow is what will continue. This is going to be my motto for 2021. What you allow is what will continue. So if you say inspections are important and you're going to do the repair order audit process and there's no follow up from anybody, then they don't believe you. And if they don't believe you, then it's like, eh, must not have been that important to him. So we're just going to do something else 
or we're going to keep not doing things until we find something that, that the owner feels passionate about and is really pushing us on. Okay. So again, so the bonus one, or we're not even given it is going to be make, make an appointment with yourself, put it on your calendar. Number one, randomly pick repair orders. Number two, look for customer information. Number three, what was the original complaint or the pebble in the shoe? Four, what did the inspection reveal? Five, did the estimate get written and mileage-based services get added? Six, what was the total estimate versus the amount sold and the closing ratio? And finally, the follow-up. Who failed in that step? Who failed in the process? And how do we follow up with that person? How do we make sure that next time everything works flawlessly? I hope this helped. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can reach out to me, shoot me email, call me on my cell phone. I'd be more than happy to talk business with you and learn more about your auto repair shop. Again, my name is Chris Cotton, Auto Fix Auto Shop Coaching. Have a great day, everybody.